Hey guys, um, so we have hit a little bit of a technical snafu uh, and also a timing snafu. So let's uh, start with the timing snafu as that's the less exciting story. Say snafu. Snafu. <laughs> How can you not get amaretto right, but you can get snafu right five times in a row? <laughs> uh, so we have a bunch of stuff going on in each one of our lives right now. Guess we did not anticipate how busy July would be. Um, so I am leaving for California in just a couple days. Uh, Scott is pretty much like dead in the middle of wedding season where, you know, him and Megan run off doing weddings. And on top of that, uh, Adam just finished a move and is starting a new job and his work schedules a little crazy, but, we had every intention of giving you guys some top-notch episodes that we were going to record before I left for California. And what happened was that we are trying a new recording program called Zencaster, uh, which helps record uh, – we'll get past the boring stuff real quick. Uh, it records each one of us individually, and then it gives us just a better sound quality. So if you've noticed that the sound is a little bit better in the most recent episodes, it's because of Zencaster. Uh, if you're trying to become a podcaster, you should definitely use Zencaster. Thank you, Kate, for, at support for uh, all of your help. We're giving you a plug. Um, <laughs> now, now, here's the problem is that Scott had an out-of-date Chrome, which was – giving us a few issues. Uh, don't, and, don't, don't blame me. And I mean, you, Adam, my, it is my fault. But it's and, right. and Adam uh, just recently moved, and it looks like his router is giving him uh, some real technical difficulties where he was dropping and being at it back to the calls. Lots of snafus. Snafus out the wazoos. <laughs> so uh, when we logged on tonight to record, I saw that there was a help button and a woman named Kate on there. So I messaged Kate and said, hello, Kate, we're having an issue. Uh, can you figure out why we can't connect with our one caller? Uh, so <laughs> when it comes to Zencaster, you can set a nickname every single time you join a room. And Adam chose the name Big Wang. <laughs> uh, and... What I was not aware of was that Kate can see the names, so she has no context whatsoever and is trying to help us the best she can, and in doing so, says certain things to us, including catchphrases like this. I said, she goes, was it the guest Mexi Can Suit? Uh, <laughs> Which uh, is a joke that you'll understand more if we ever are able to release the episode that we attempted to record the other night. Uh, and I said, actually, I'm ashamed to say this, but it was huge wang. And she goes, great. <laughs> um, I said, so is the issue with Mexi, Mexi suit or huge wang? And she goes, the issues with Mexi suit, huge, I just saw huge wang. Let me check his settings. Huge wang is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love how we gave her a plug, and now we're just telling all the embarrassing intricacies of this story. Um, so what we're getting at is that for the next probably two, possibly three weeks, there's going to be a series of retroactive episodes while – Everything's getting fixed and uh, put back in place, so to say. So um, we apologize in advance because, as you know, when we did uh, Reddit Heart Club, our sound quality was probably the worst it's ever been. So definitely be prepared for these to be a little bit rough in the coming weeks, but I hope you guys enjoy it nonetheless. So the retroactive episode that we decided to pick was Dead Snow 2 uh, was it Red and Dead? Red versus Dead, which ah, all of us, if I recall, fucking hated this movie. And it was so well reviewed and well received. And I believe we ended up looking like the biggest douchebags in the chat, which was <laughs> which was not out of the norm at this point. I'm pretty sure most of the fans despised us. Um, but. <laughs> but my god and this was this was also picked by Plymouth uh and she has such a long rant about this particular movie um do you want to read it here or no <laughs> okay <laughs> this is um, like 
this is like nine paragraphs of wow of thoughts oh let me let me see let's see uh she says hi guys i am here to create a whole new genre you know what i like over the top shit like dead snow 2 or this podcast technically you guys aren't wrong about most of your complaints but i still adore the series and for a lot of the reasons that you dislike it i can refer to dead snow as a series because i imagine they'll probably make a third at some point maybe if they make enough i can force you guys to start banning movies uh, i don't typically watch <laughs> gimmicky zombie movies or anything with nazis uh, so I'm not burnt out on them at all, but I was super surprised when I liked these movies uh, and that I even chose to watch them, really. Um, and she keeps going on and on and on and on for all of her reasons for liking it, to which uh, Allison makes a cut, because I guess she compared it to Frankenstein's Army at one point, and Allison said, I did not care for Frankenstein's Army. To me, it felt like when I used to have to watch my high school boyfriend play video games. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's such a good explanation for... <laughs> what that movie is. I mean, I'm not even I'm not even really a video game guy, as everybody knows that listens to the podcast. But um, I I don't know, man. Frankenstein's Army was fun. I feel like Dead Snow was trying real hard. I don't like zombie movies. Obviously, we've talked about that ad nauseum. I mean, I like Return of the Living Dead. That's about it. Um, but I I don't know. Like I I feel like Dead Snow two was very on the nose with its quote unquote humor and it's quote unquote horror <laughs> I, I put those in parenthesis or in quotation marks because i found it neither comedic or horrifying just didn't like it although the very end was the the whole reason this is worth even having a retroactive episode is because you and adam if i remember correctly at the end of this episode just sing Eclipse, totally Eclipse of the Heart, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking through the chats, and I guess this was roughly around the time when I started my campaign against Kung Fury. Because <laughs> a lot of people in the chat there are trashing me for, for not liking Kung Fury. Um, which is, for the record, still a terrible movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, am not a fan at all, and We've talked about that before, but, um, you know, I just, I'm angry again. Like, the hatred and, and fire is just a low ember in my heart now for Kung Fury because it's been long enough. But, I mean, let's just compare the bullshit that is Kung Fury to the beautiful piece of art that is Turbo Kid. Because they're basically attacked. What? I know. Oh my god, Matt! I think that you're putting it off because you're afraid that it's not going to live up to the hype that Adam and I have, and Megan now, have given it. But it's so fucking charming. You just need to watch it, man. You're going to fall in love with it. You're going to fall in love with Apple. She's your manic pixie dream girl, just like you always like. Come on, just do it for daddy. All right, but first, let's look back on Dead Snow 2. Red versus dead. Welcome to another episode of the Reddit Horror Club. I have no funny intro, just that none of us like this movie. So let's get started. I'm joined, as always, by Adam and Scott, and we're going to talk about Dead Snow, Red vs. Dead. What a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's I, We're going to maybe fight on that a little bit. I have problems with it, but my main problem is that it's forgettable. It's nothing. It's boring and just blah. Middle of the road. It's if I hadn't, um, if I hadn't messaged you guys for the first half an hour before I fell asleep the first time watching this movie, um, <laughs> I, 
I I don't think I'd remember anything from it. <laughs> um, yeah, I took a bunch of notes, and I really don't remember too much of what the notes mean. So um, let's uh, so so the movie starts off. Well, actually, let's start off with this. There was a major dispute um, between if this movie was in English or not between the three of us. <laughs> I like how that's the only dispute, not that it's a piece of shit, just rather than. <laughs> well, we're all we're all in agreement on that. Whether this was English or not is a whole different story. Because, okay, I I was watching this on Matt's Netflix. He gave me his Netflix, so I'm I, I'm looking online for for a copy of it, and I can't find one that has subtitles. Everywhere I go, it's German, and I can't understand it. So I said, "Oh, I'm not going to be able to watch this." So Matt gave me his Netflix, and he said, "Well, it's in it's in English. I don't know what the problem is, but here's my Netflix." And I pull up his Netflix, and it's in fucking German too. And it's got subtitles. And so Matt and Scott are both fighting me that this was not in German, that it was dubbed English, even though it wasn't for me. I don't even think it was dubbed English. I think a large portion it was, of it is just straight English. It's it's in English. It's a um, It was a Norwegian film, so the, yeah, it's... Okay, not German, but Nor- Norwegian? Is that what they speak? I don't know. I, I don't know idea. what they speak, but it's a Norwegian film. A Norwegian... Icelandic film or ah, but yeah, the 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 weirdest part about this whole fucking thing is that um, it's like not English. I mean, it's not an English film yet. It's in English, and then the English speaking actors have British accents, even though they're very obviously from Europe. Okay, but it's not. <laughs> All right, well, we can talk about this for hours, so let's talk about what actually happened in this movie. So the movie starts off with a recap of the first film, which is helpful since I only watched the first film once, uh, and that was a while ago. But uh, basically, the sole survivor of the first movie escapes, but one of the zombie Nazis uh, gets hit by a truck driver who tries to perform CPR, which I kind of thought was uh, weird to begin with, uh, and ends up getting attacked. Like, if... I don't know. I've never hit anybody with my car, and ideally that continues. But like, I don't know if C- is CPR what you're supposed to give someone after you've hit them with a car? Chances are their ribs are all crushed up, and you're just making it worse. <laughs> like, <laughs> Truly, are we? Is is that really even worth questioning? Of that's all what, the bad shit, broke my stupid. suspension of disbelief. Well. <laughs> In the in the beginning narration where he's recapping the movie, he says like, "And this is the point where the zombie Nazis attacked our cabin." I know, as cliche as that sounds, and I'm like, "Oh Jesus Christ!" We're at the point where that's a cliche. <laughs> <laughs> also, calling out your cliches doesn't make them any less shitty cliches. They're still yeah, this, stupid. This movie is like, "Ooh, look how like uh, how." Um, like meta we are hey 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 we're in on the jokes that makes our jokes funny right no it doesn't fucking make your jokes funny like i could explain this movie to someone and people could be like haha that's funny and i'm like no actually it's not well okay so there's a scene in the very beginning he gets uh martin is the name of the main character um gets attacked in his car and I don't know if it was because I was watching on my laptop, but I had no clue what the fuck was happening. It was so dark. Like, was that? Did you guys have an issue with that too? Like, is that just no. my shitty laptop? No, I had to shut off all the lights in my apartment just to fucking properly see what was going on. Okay, you're talking about just the first part. In the very, very beginning, when like the gold coin drops on the floor and then the zombie punches through the window, like oh, there's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. scuffle, and I'm like, I don't know what's ha- I have no clue what I'm looking at right now. Like, it's all quick cuts, but it's all, like, super dark. And I was like, I have no fucking clue what's going on in this scene. But, uh, anyway, Martin gets into a car accident. And the doctor attaches one of the zombie arms to him. Which, like, like how shitty is this doctor that that clearly is, like, I don't understand how, how the zombie arm suddenly looks fresh. Um, and then, like, he slices the doctor open just by hitting him. Which I don't understand. No, either. no, no. He 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 picked up a scalpel. Oh, okay. I missed that. I thought he literally just slashed him across the chest with his hand and somehow cut him open. 
Um, but yeah, he kills a bunch of people because the hand has has a mind of its own. But idle hands it's trying did, to do its idle hand. Yeah, idle hands did it way better. Um, and then one of my notes just says the zombie also gets Martin's arm because why not? <laughs> um, I feel like because why not is basically what the production notes were throughout the entire movie. <laughs> They they go through this whole procedure of having like the the dead Nazi doctor reattach the arm, but then it just attaches via magic anyways. So what the fuck was the point of having the doctor do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this movie is such a pile of garbage. <laughs> like magic zombies, really? Okay. All right, I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. So he kills. He ends up killing a small child who totally and... deserves it. Fuck that <laughs> yeah, kid, that Bobby. Kid is fucking annoying yeah Bob, he's a piece of shit and i'm glad he's short-lived in there and then he tries to <laughs> tries to like resuscitate the kid but only manages to just pull out his heart and just kill him <laughs> furthermore yeah well that actually there you go like explaining things like this it's kind of funny to it, think yeah, of it that you, way you laugh you're like ha, 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 the accidents happen blah blah but then no it's not funny in the in the actual context of the film it's just stupid well okay so this is where we get to the part that i was just fucking annoyed by because I love Martin Starr. Martin Starr is super un- underused in this movie and really shouldn't be in this. He deserves better than it. But like the whole like zombie squad thing is uh it's like can't hardly wait level offensive of like what a geek is. And you've got like these like oh we can't let our landlords know. Oh you mean your parents jokes. Like oh like I haven't heard that fucking joke before. A this is the most times. tired movie ever. Like yeah. it ugh. It's a. I, I think I wrote down that it's it's basically like a mixtape of scenes that worked better in other movies. In other movies, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like it's got like the ash cutting off his hand scene. It's got uh, the fucking like the can't hardly wait nerds discussing the plan of attack sequence. It's got the idle hands possessed hands sequence. Like it's all things that work. It's got some better. Indiana Jones shit too in it. Um, there's a scene in dialogue, well, oh, oh, a second, so, I'll, uh, there's, there's two other notes that I have, because, yeah, really, like, I I was trying to explain this movie to someone, and it's literally an hour and a half long movie that is essentially three sequences that just go on forever. I'm trying to think, like, we've described so far the first 15 minutes, and I'm I'm at a loss as to what happens until the very fucking end. Like, well, the, what, what happened because, in the middle of this movie? Because there's, like, an hour-long sequence of them hiding out in, like, the historical building while the zombies are attacking a bunch of people in wheelchairs. Um, which did give me the only laugh in the entire movie for me, is when the lady in the wheelchair is trying to escape. It's like she just very slowly falls down. Um, that got a chuckle out of me, but that was it. Like, and then there's a scene. There's a scene in this movie that infuriates me so much because it's literally just the writer blowing himself about how unique his movie is. Where like literally Martin Starr says to the other guy, uh, "I've never seen anything like this before. You've literally created your own, a whole new genre here." I'm like, yeah. Oh, my God. my eyes rolled so hard they fucking popped out the back of my head <laughs> like, when I heard that. That was retarded. Like, yeah. There's one person who is a fan of this movie, and that is the man who the wrote this movie. <laughs> like, yes. yeah. Well, I, I, maybe Plymouth too. I want to know why she picked this. I hope she I, picked it because she hates it and just watched No, it. she didn't. She didn't pick it because she hates it. I think that you guys were right. We were we were messaging a couple days ago and and talking about how. We think the last couple of movies that have be are picked for this round are like people trying to pick stuff that they think we're gonna like, and, and that's, miserably. <laughs> that's gonna fucking that's not gonna work out well for you. <laughs> yeah, don't, uh, don't ever do that. Yeah, no, just don't. pick stuff we hate because like if you pick stuff that we you think we're gonna hate, it's gonna end up like Frankenstein's Army where it was fucking great. Well, <laughs> honestly though, this movie I think was picked because we well me. I jerked off uh, Frankenstein's Army so hard, and I was just like, oh, this movie's great, so absurd, blah, blah. Like, I get it. This movie is supposed to be that level of absurdity, but it's just not funny. It just tries so hard and fails so miserably. This is the worst pick we have ever had in the three years and 
Two hundred movies? How many no, fucking that's, movies? That's no, true. I will stop yeah, you you're, right you're there. You're full of shit. There's no way. <laughs> what, what's worse than this? Red, um, white, blue. Wakewood, red, white, and blue. No, 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 no. No, I'm not talking about like offensiveness. I'm talking about just straight waste of time. Yeah. No, red, white, I still this. I, I still so, disagree. <laughs> I was. I was. I would watch red, white, like a week after Wakewood, I watched red, white, blue. Yeah, week. Uh, Wakewood was was. The still probably the worst thing that we've ever had to watch. Here's the best thing about Wake, but I didn't watch it. Yeah, I watched like the first twenty minutes. I was like, "This sucks." I turned it off, and now I'm a fucking co-host and have to watch this bull. <laughs> <laughs> was was Ganja and Hess an easier sit through than this movie? Yeah, because there are boobs. <laughs> oh fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so actually, to to kind of go with the point that you're trying to make, um. I mean, I didn't really watch that much, so I can't really go into the, uh, you know, what did we watch this week. But one of the things that I am going to talk about a little bit more in detail is that I watched Kung Fury. And wait, 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 wait. Before before we get into Kung Fury, though, aren't we supposed to do notes? Because I have notes, too. Well, no, 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 no. I'm tying this back into to, oh, okay. to, to Dead Snow, too. So, okay. So Kung Fury, I think, is the exact same issue uh, in two different ways. Number one, it's a movie that multiple people have told me to watch now, even after I've already seen it, because of a misunderstanding of, like, oh, this is something that Matt would like. And uh, I can get into that more when we talk about what we watch, why I disagree with that. But the other thing is that it's one of those movies that's just like, hey, it's ridiculous, so you're supposed to love it, right? And, like, it, it falls into that family guy type level of ridiculous where it's like, no, ridiculous only takes you so far. And there has to be like a rhyme or reason to the ridiculous after a while. And that's what I think is one of the biggest issues with something like Dead Snow is that it's just, hey, none of this has to make sense because people are going to like it because it's absurd. And like somehow, yeah. here's the thing that sucks. All three of us are in agreement that this is not a good movie and not a movie that we'd ever want to watch again. This movie has a fucking 87% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I saw that too, and I <laughs> cannot believe it. <laughs> Is Rotten Tomatoes all 13-year-olds? Because that's the only explanation. No, their their uh, percentages are based on the actual critical reviews, like the, the Roger Eberts and the Ruperts and all those guys. Like, those are the guys whose reviews count. Like, you have to... The the one guy had to write reviews for Geekscape for almost a decade before he was even eligible to be considered one of the uh, critics whose opinions mattered for uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Like you have to be a super established film critic. Well, uh, those people don't watch as much horror movies as we do. <laughs> oh, that's just it. They watch like two horror movies a year, and they're watching like Unfriended and the newest Paranormal Activity. So when something that and I'm using quotation marks, like, skewers the genre comes along, and they think it's something special, but this is bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah, I'm, you know what? You Now that you bring that up, I'm sure that, like, if I had to watch Dead Snow 2 immediately after having to watch, like, I don't know, Ouija, the Poltergeist remake, and Unfriended, I'd think it was pretty goddamn good, too. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> but as far as just sitting down and watching it as like a movie that I really don't feel like watching in the first place, but then having to watch, I was like, this is fucking garbage. And I heard yeah. so many people tell me it was better than the first Dead Snow. And like, I don't remember the first Dead Snow that much at all. I remember just thinking nothing about it. But is it is it serious? Well, I can't no, figure I out what the tone of this is. one is either. Well, I think this I, one is it's its tongue is so firmly in cheek that it's it is just you, you can't you can't get through the layers of like meta and sarcasm and it's just it's a piece of garbage, man. All right, so they are at the museum and they use a guy's intestines to refill a gas tank on a tank. Yeah, because um, again, why not? They realize that they have to go wake up Russians and that Martin's arm will allow him to do that. Blah, 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 blah. They wake up the Russians and then they have the final battle, uh, which is not enjoyable either. It's boring. It's not even in – yeah, it's not even interesting. It's super And the boring. one chick, the one blonde chick who like shows up, she's like, I thought you guys could use some help. And then she goes, ah, and makes this stupid face. I was like, I don't care how much you got paid to do that. That was terrible. Um. Also, it, 
is it wrong of me to have some serious doubts that two hot chicks would have anything to do with the zombie squad? Yeah, well, why? They both seem mentally deficient, so <laughs> it's probably got a lot to do with it. Anyway, so they they kill the main Nazi zombie, and Martin runs away, and he he brings his dead girlfriend back to life and proceeds to have sex with the rotting zombie corpse of his dead girlfriend. Uh, and that's set to totally another, another, another the fucking heart. reference to Titanic. I mean, like if we if I had a if I took a drink every time there was a reference to another movie in this movie, I don't think I'd have lived through the night. Oh, probably not. And uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart plays us plays us out, and that's the end See, of this it's, shitty it's, fucking and movie. It's trying five and a half though. minutes of Total Eclipse of the Heart. Nobody actually wants to listen to the entire Total Eclipse of the Heart. I don't know why they would put it in this movie. I mean, I can see putting like thirty seconds in, maybe. I mean, I, I like I like the song enough, but not enough to really want to watch someone bone a dead body for five minutes. I don't think there is a song that you could play that would make me want to watch that. <laughs> Corpse you guys Grind Man Man by Harley Poe. <laughs> Cold Blue by TSOL. <laughs> Um, all right, so yeah, let's let's get into notes if we can. Yeah, Adam, you want to go first because I got I just I just want to read off the shit that I said in the the Facebook conversation. All right, well, let's do the notes intro here. And Scott, you can go ahead and do yours first. <laughs> okay. All right, so. Um, we're arguing about, uh, um, so these zombies don't want to eat people at all. What a retarded twist. Um, and, uh, and I says, boy, somebody wanted to make another return of living dead. Um, (laughs) Adam says, you'll understand everything this movie has to say at about 30 minutes and can guess the entire end. And I said, ugh, these jokes are terrible. Matt says the movie is like a mixtape of things that worked in other movies. Uh, then we argued about. Um, the language barriers and things like this. Uh, Adam said, I will record video of it, and you're both dumb, but he misspelled your, so fuck you. Um, (laughs) And then uh, I said, oh, wonderful, they gave him the Nazi arm. Wouldn't that arm just infect him with zombieism? Uh, I found the part that broke my suspension of disbelief. Can I turn this off now? Adam says, no, damn you, we all suffer. Wait until the Star Wars bullshit. And uh, I quoted the old man, I'm in the mood for some head, and then, well, that was predictable, because, of course, his wife's head get thrown, gets thrown in his lap, which I've seen in, like, three other movies. Um, this must be amazing to 13-year-olds. Oh, and they can just reattach limbs, okay? Why would anybody make this? It's so unfunny. So many magic powers. Semanek is going to jizz his pants. Uh, and I said, well, maybe not, because he didn't get to read a thousand-page book to discuss it. <laughs> They're magic can go inside a church. Idiotic. Uh, uh, yeah, and I just said that I had to, I had to document it or else I'd forget. So yeah, that, that, those are my notes because <laughs> I fell asleep and then Saturday morning I made myself slog through the last twenty minutes. So I missed like I missed basically the middle part when they're like fighting them in the fighting the zombies in the the, the history museum or whatever and I, I i knew i didn't miss anything i just needed to see how it ended in case there was some funny twist and there wasn't <laughs> all right all right let's hear some of the adam notes i know you say you didn't have too many though no i ended up with quite a few oh sweet let's go <laughs> all right pointing out your cliches does not make them okay Neither it, it's neither okay to do an evil dead rip off either not cool don't do that don't <laughs> do that shitty movie uh, the Nazi, and he says, um, over in the voiceover, he goes, the Nazis took her too. And it is showing a scene of him stabbing his girlfriend. The Nazis didn't take her. You fucking you killed, killed her. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you talking? Don't blame it on the Nazis. Come on. <laughs> um, audible size per minute, 12. <laughs> and then the Nazi stares at the fish for a long time. And I'm like, Nazis love fish. I don't understand what's going on here. Huh? Okay, so this arm looked nothing like your other arm and was wearing different clothes. But we reattached it, you lucky so-and-so, you. Uh Aha, you're welcome. (laughs) I like this voice. Add to the fucking list. (laughs) (laughs) We got Vincent Price. We got German accent. Um, 
We got Toulon. That would just that would just make him a zombie too, wouldn't it? Dude, I just guess read, I don't. Read the fucking rest of these in Toulon's voice. <laughs> oh, come, my friends, let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, can we take a pause right now so I can just say that I played someone the uh, Puppet Master 3 episode in my car the other day because I was so proud of that episode. And I've, <laughs> you have, it might be my favorite note that you've ever written, but it's like, <laughs> what the fuck is he doing cracking wise? His wife just died yesterday. <laughs> 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 but he's on a hunt to kill Nazis. Do <laughs> you have the one where it's like they'll be well armed, but you will too, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good episode. Oh uh, <laughs> shit! Sorry, keep going. <laughs> um, am I watching fucking American Mary here? Why is there so much arm swapping in this movie? <laughs> Christ Almighty, this is stupid. That could have been one of them. Hundred hundred reasons to take that note. Yeah. Uh, this this note takes up an entire page because I read it. I wrote it in huge letters because I was angry. It goes, "Oh my god, this is the stupidest shit in the world." Zombie squad, fucking tourist kid, triple chocolate fudge, fucking. Uh, it's terrible. I'd say what happened to you, Martin Starr, but you never really did shit, anyways. No, no. Yeah, but I Lol. love him. I love okay, him so much. <laughs> you love him because he's mediocre. No, I love him because he's usually good in things, even if it's a small part. He was you great. Know, Freaks and Geeks, he was great. His episode of Undeclared was good. You know, aside from Freaks and Geeks, everything you've ever seen him in, he's high as fuck. Oh, most likely. I, I even like him in, uh, what's that movie with Tom Green? Uh, Stealing Harvard. <laughs> And he plays the guy oh, that runs the convenience fuck. store that gets robbed. I like him in uh, Knocked Up, where he's not allowed to shave or cut his hair for <laughs> an entire year. He's, he's doing the Dirty Man Challenge. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Knocked Up, and for some reason, my friends don't love that movie as much as me, and so I don't get to quote it, which is finding just out, sad. Finding out afterwards how much of a cunt Katherine Heigl is kind of wrecks that movie's charm a little bit. But uh, Yeah, lol. Katherine Heigl... Sorry, Kath no. Heigl's best moment is probably in My Father the Hero with uh, uh, that French dude, uh, Gerard Depardieu, when she's like, she's like, oh, I'm fucking 14 and a total bitch to my dad and to his wife and my mom and everybody in the world. Ah, we're going to go on this vacation, but fuck my dad. I'm going to pretend that he's my boyfriend. Like, it is just, that movie would never get made nowadays. <laughs> I forgot about that movie. <laughs> I did because Megan and I watched some of it like a year ago because I think it was on Netflix. And uh, I don't think that she even got through the whole thing. She's like, God, this movie's not like what I remembered it being. <laughs> Plus, I mean, Catherine Heigl's a bitch. <laughs> I think that's what we're really trying to get here, listeners. I would oh, rather she's... talk about anything than this movie. <laughs> anyway, Seriously, can, I don't even care. Adam. This is the worst movie we've discussed. I'm going to disagree with that, but continue, Adam. Yeah, I'm sure we can find other evidence to back us up. But um, this whole zombie squad is staring into the camera the entire movie and going, Lol, we are nerds. Nerds are we. Ha ha ha. Like, fuck off. Um, they, they concentrate on... What's that? They need you wearing fedoras to make it... <laughs> yeah, that would be fedorable. Um <laughs> <laughs> Like, they, they show wheelchair guy, like, 15 times, and I'm like, okay, well, he's going to die. That's for fucking sure. You can concentrate on him so much. Um, yes, hello. Welcome to the Exposition Museum. We will explain everything that's going to happen in this movie to you. <laughs> oh, gross, Martin. Don't touch the puke. That's gross. <laughs> Man, I cannot handle Martin Starr's dialogue. It is fucking awful. And I swear to God, one more fucking Star Wars quote out of this chick, and I'm shutting this fucking movie off. Oh, my God, that was so ham-fisted and stupid. Oh, my God, it made my head hurt just fucking listening to that. All right, you guys know what's never funny. I mean, it's just like it's never funny. This movie, once, ever. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> No, not the Nazis. They're like a ten-minute walk outside of Talvik. The Russians are like a few hours drive outside of Talvik. But I'm betting that tomorrow they're all going to show up at the same time. 
They're only like five minutes late. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Nazis even. The Nazis are behind them. How do you get a troop of Russians down? The, in, like they drove like a whole day to get to this Russian place. And then they're there before the Nazis who were like 10 minutes outside of the place. Like what happened? Did the Nazis Listen, all take a nap? Nazi a zombie, zombie nap? arm magic. That's the oh, answer. Oh. Okay, he flew them there. He summoned Falcor, and they all fucking flew there on a wish dragon. All right. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Seriously, don't don't make this movie into a sequel that I would actually enjoy. <laughs> uh, created a whole new genre here, man. Wow, writers of this movie, don't break your arm jerking yourself off. <laughs> And then the Russians and the Nazis face off, like, right there. They had the drop on them. Why wouldn't the Russians flank the Nazis and get in, like, behind them and start slaughtering them, like, right away? Why would they, like, face... I don't know. That's a stupid note. Um, this tank this tank fight is so incredibly green screen and obvious. Yeah. It's brutal to watch. Uh, that better be the last fucking Star Wars quote, because I've only got, like, ten minutes left. I <laughs> don't want to shut this off yet. All right, has anyone ever played Total Eclipse of the Heart unironically in a movie? I would hope not. I don't I don't think it exists. So here's the question. That whole ending scene with Total Eclipse of the Heart and a dude banging a rotting corpse, would you have preferred that or another Star Wars reference? Star Wars reference because it's shorter? <laughs> No, I couldn't take that another word. <laughs> I, if that chick had one more line of dialogue, I would have fucking Nazi armed my TV to death. I would have fucking punched <laughs> it. I would have been done. I just fucking done. All right. So, final synopsis is that this two this movie is too dumb to be funny, and it's trying too hard to be funny to be scary. So it's just plain fucking lame, and forgettable, and boring. And I don't. I didn't enjoy watching it. Sorry, Plymouth. Hey guys, thank you so much for sticking around and listening to these retroactive episodes. Uh, we just released one. There's more to come, obviously. Uh, you can always check out what's going on on our end of our lives with HMNPodcast.com, created by the beautiful, sexy, and charming Stephen Bay. Thank you, Stephen. Um, and that gives you all of our old archives. And just a quick reminder... I will be at Geekscape booth 3919 at San Diego Comic-Con next weekend. And I'll be in Ohio. <laughs> Just hanging out in Ohio. Uh, thanks, guys, and tune in next week. listening to the Geekscape Network.